You're born into a world without light, without warmth, just crushing pressure and eternal silence. A world where survival is not just hard, it's absurd. You don't have a cute baby face. You're already over half a meter long, nearly the size of a house cat, with a body that looks like it belongs in a prehistoric horror movie. Because, well, it does. And you haven't changed in over 80 million years. Back when dinosaurs ruled the Earth and continents hadn't yet settled into their modern shapes, your ancestors were already gliding through ancient seas. And while everything else evolved, birds from raptors, whales from land-dwelling creatures, you stayed almost exactly the same. That might sound cool, but is it? In the evolutionary arms race, Staying the same is the equivalent of showing up to a gunfight with a slingshot made of bones. Your body is long and serpent-like, more eel than shark. You can grow up to two meters long, but your movement is sluggish and undulating. You don't dart, you drift. In an ocean full of swift, agile predators, you're a slow-moving relic. You spend your life living anywhere between 100 to 1500 meters deep, though sometimes you're found as shallow as 50 meters, but that's rare. Most of the time, you're in the twilight and midnight zones of the ocean, places where sunlight does not reach, where pressure is so intense it could crush a human submarine if it's not properly reinforced. You spend your life near the ocean floor, benthopelagic as scientists call it crawling the border between survival and extinction. You're found in weird scattered pockets all across the globe, from the Atlantic to the Pacific to the Indian Ocean. But you're never in one place for long, or in great numbers. That's the thing about being a frilled shark. You're a ghost in the deep, an ancient survivor in a world that forgot you existed. And from the moment you're born, you're already cursed with a body and environment that set you up for a life of struggle. You don't get to eat like other sharks. You're not fast enough to chase, not strong enough to fight. You adapt into something far more nightmarish. Your mouth, for starters, isn't where it should be. It's right at the front of your face, terminal, like a trap door just waiting to spring. But what's inside is where things really start to get terrifying. You've got over 300 teeth, each shaped like a tiny three-pronged trident, spread across 25 neatly packed rows that don't just point inward, but also backward, forming a perfect biological prison. Once anything enters your mouth, it never gets out. Your prey struggles, but every attempt to escape just drives it deeper down your throat. Each tooth catches flesh like a barbed wire fence, but what do you eat in this underwater void? Deepwater squid make up around 60% of your diet, along with bony fish and even other sharks smaller than you. You're not picky. If it moves and fits in your mouth, it's food. Your jaws are elastic enough to swallow prey up to half your size. Hunting in the deep sea requires more than brute force. You have to be a master ambush predator. Your body coils like a spring, silently winding in the dark. Then snap you lunge, using suction to pull your prey into that endless cavern of teeth. Some researchers even believe you use your teeth to lure prey, like a natural fishing lure in total darkness. A flicker of white fangs in the black might just be the last thing your dinner ever sees. Hunting in complete darkness, no sunlight, no mercy, just you and your prey. Frilled shark's pregnancy lasts three and a half years. You're ovoviviparous, meaning your embryos begin life inside egg capsules, developing quietly within your body. But unlike most egg layers, you don't deposit them in the sand and swim away. Instead, you keep them inside your uterus, nurturing them until they hatch and finally emerge as fully formed miniature frilled sharks. By the time they're born, they're already about 0.4 to 0.6 meters long, bigger than most fish in the neighborhood. But don't let that size fool you. Life outside the womb doesn't offer them protection, just predators, starvation, and darkness. You give birth to a litter of just two to 15 pups, usually around six. And once they're out, they're on their own. No parental guidance, no pack, 
just instinct and a desperate need to survive. Maturity takes time too. If you're male, you'll grow to about 0.9 to 1.6 meters before you're ready to mate. Females reach about 1.3 meters before they can carry young of their own. That means years of slow growth, avoiding death at every turn, only to repeat the same agonizing reproductive cycle. And during all that time, through those long years of gestation, there's always a risk. If you're injured, if food runs dry, if conditions turn hostile, your pups die before they ever see the ocean. Frilled sharks are not built for speed or agility. They are built for survival. You have no swim bladder like most fish. That would rupture under this kind of pressure. Instead, you float using something far more primal, a massive liver, soft, spongy, and loaded with lipids. Fats so light, they act like natural ballast tanks. It lets you hover motionless, mid-water, saving energy in a world where food is rare and movement is a luxury. But motion isn't the only thing you can serve. Your bones aren't even real bones, you're made of cartilage, just like other sharks, but yours is specially adapted to withstand crushing deep sea pressures. Down here, every inch of your body must be flexible yet resilient, or it will collapse under the weight of the ocean itself. And still, the threats don't stop. Even in the cold, inky dark, you're not alone. You're often crawling with parasites. Tapeworms, flatworms, and nematodes infest your gut and gills. There's no escape. There's no medicine, just slow decay as these invaders eat away from within. But despite it all, you've evolved one of the most advanced sensory systems in the deep sea. Along the sides of your eel-like body runs a lateral line, but not just any lateral line. Yours is exposed. It's covered in tiny, sensitive mechanoreceptors capable of detecting the slightest vibration, the faintest flicker of motion, from meters away. You don't see your prey, you feel it, moving through the water like a whisper in a tomb. In the abyss, where light doesn't exist and sound is muffled, this system is your superpower, a built-in sonar tuned to life and death. But this power comes at a cost. You forever drift between predator and prey, fragile but fierce, blind but hyper-aware. An ancient machine surviving in a pressure cooker nightmare that's been squeezing the life out of weaker creatures for millions of years. No one really knows how many of you are left. You're so elusive, so deep, so rarely seen that there's barely any data. And what little we do know should set off alarm bells. You don't reproduce quickly, we've already seen that. A single female may only give birth to six pups every three years, if she survives that long. If even one stage of your long gestation is interrupted by starvation, parasites, or fishing nets, the entire litter is lost. And that's the problem. You're not being hunted for your meat or your fins. You're not the target, but you're still dying as bycatch. Bottom trawlers, gill nets, and long lines tear blindly through your ancient world, like wrecking balls smashing through a forgotten cathedral. They don't see you, they don't mean to catch you, but they do. You're dragged from the deep, twisted in mesh and steel, and as you're hauled toward the surface, your body, designed for the crushing weight of the abyss, begins to collapse. Organs swell, flesh tears, you die before the light ever touches you. There's no outrage, no headlines, no rescue plan, because no one even knows you exist. You're a ghost species, alive but almost invisible, to science, to policy, to the human eye. And in a way, that might be the most tragic part of your story. You've endured for longer than almost any living vertebrate, but now, in an age of satellite tracking and AI prediction, your fate could be decided by ignorance. Not predators, not extinction-level events, just people who never knew you were there.